there are up to nine people out there walking with nuclear powered hearts. They have these things inside their chests which are called pacemakers. And these pacemakers have one extremely dangerous substance, plutonium. So why would we ever consider using such dangerous pacemakers and how are people don't get radiation poisoning? For those who don't know, pacemakers are used to help people to maintain a good heart rate. Some people have abnormal heartbeats and that's dangerous, since having a regular heartbeat may cause stroke, heart failure or cardiac arrest. When the small thing which is called sinus node together with other biological pacemaker cells don't work properly and sends weird electrical signals, some patients may receive a pacemaker. So this device sends better signals to the heart than uh, biological sinus node. The first implantable pacemaker was done in 1958 to a guy named Arnie Larson. The guy first played hockey, but later his heart started acting strangely and he had even hard time getting out of bed and often fell unconscious. Sometimes his heart would stop beating, so his wife would have to punch him in the chest to unalive her husband. Anyway, the first pacemaker which was implanted into this man failed in just 3 hours. Now second one failed in 6 weeks. The dude received 26 pacemakers during his life but he still managed to outlive pacemaker inventor and the surgeon. One of the reasons for such crazy amount of pacemakers was batteries with a short lifespan. The first pacemakers used mercury batteries which had short lifespan and also released hydrogen gas at the zinc anode. So having a possibility of hydrogen gas being released inside didn't seem very healthy, so later these batteries were swapped with nickel cadmium rechargeable cells. However, the patient had to spend 12 hours each week to charge his battery wirelessly or inductively, so that kind of sucked. Thankfully, in 1972 lithium-ion batteries were invented and pacemakers could last around 10 years without a need to be constantly recharged. But that still wasn't enough. Several pacemaker manufacturers had an idea. Why don't we make a pacemaker which will outlast any patient and will have power for more than possibly 100 years? Even though plutonium-238 is highly toxic and can cause cancer, it was still used in the nuclear pacemakers. If it was released in the body, this plutonium would remain in patient's liver and bones forever. It is also extremely carcinogenic to the lungs, just breathing in 0.1 mg of this stuff would be enough to cause cancer. However, it is still one of the safest options when it comes to other radioactive materials. Most of its radiation is in alpha decay, so if the pacer is completely shielded, alpha particles can reach the human body. The battery housing is actually designed to withstand gunshots and cremation. However, after further tests, it appeared that uh, cremation of the person with such pacemaker could jeopardize the casing and release radiation. Those rates at the outside surface of the pacemaker are approximately 5 to 15 milliram per hour from the emitted gamma rays and neutrons. The wall body exposure is estimated to be approximately 0.1 rem per year to the patient, which is even smaller than the exposure we all get from background radiation, so it's kind of safe. So how plutonium makes electricity? Well, plutonium-238 radiates heat. There are also two conducting points and when there is a temperature difference between them, it generates voltage. This effect is called Seebeck effect. Since plutonium-238 has a short half-life of 88 years, it radiates sufficient amount of heat to power nuclear pacemaker. It has insane energy density, however, the energy output is rather small. One kilogram of this plutonium has 2,200,000 megajoules per kilogram, while lithium battery has around 950 joules. However, plutonium releases its heat at a rate of 0.57 watts per gram, so one gram is not enough to power a small light bulb. Nuclear batteries are not only used in pacemakers but also in various space missions. These days NASA has around 17 kilograms or 37 pounds of plutonium-238 left. During Cold War it was a byproduct of 
The process used to make nuclear weapons, so NASA is running out of this material now. They have said that they will be able to make only three batteries with what they have. Good news though, apparently USA has recently restarted production of plutonium-238 and is aiming to produce at least 1 kilogram or 2.2 pounds per year. And 1 kilogram of this stuff will cost uh, just 8 million dollars to make. Space people previously have used nuclear batteries in Voyager, Curiosity, several Mars landers, Apollo missions and many more. Even now, Voyager 2, 45 years later, is still being powered by nuclear batteries. But with half-life power due to 238 a plutonium half-life, one battery produces around 125 watts, which is needed to power communications and other electronics. Also, the reason why solar power is not the only power solution is because it is not always available, and some probes like Voyager is way too far from the sun to receive enough power. I read that one nuclear pacemaker had outlasted its hospital which bankrupted, also it outlasted its manufacturer. So when the patient dies, it will be a weird situation where the hospital, which doesn't exist, have to return the plutonium-filled pacemaker to its manufacturer, which also is gone. Crematorium technicians who may find this in the ashes, they would actually need to contact US government, called Offsite Source Recovery Program. Who knows, maybe this plutonium in pacemakers will be reused in space missions. Anyway, the reason why these nuclear-powered pacemakers fell out of fashion was the fact that lithium-ion was just way easier to deal with and the constantly changing technologies allowed lithium pacemakers to last up to 15 years. Just one short operation and patients would have new pacemaker or new batteries. I found few sources which claimed that up to 600 of these pacemakers were applied, but that was long time ago and today less than 9 people have them. But still, it is pretty cool when these people can say that they are nuclear powered. Still not as long lasting as the memory when a girl complimented us.